Hey guys, Dozing Chopper here, and in this video, I'll be giving you a guide on how to improve at PvP in Daisy and hopefully lift your overall enjoyment of Daisy. You might be thinking, who is this guy to tell me how to improve in Daisy? Well, except for the countless massive clan wipes I have under my belt, Battle Royale wins, and over 10,000 hours in Daisy standalone. I also have been a professional esports player in PUBG, an esport game that is closest to representing Daisy on an esport level. In that, I have achieved 7th in the World Finals in Berlin 2018, 3rd at the North America PUBG Regionals 2018, multiple PUBG Pro League seasons in Berlin throughout 2019. So, when I give you this guide, it best represents what I, myself, put into practice you may want to adapt a few things personal adaptation is vital to getting you into the best possible situation to survive in daisy be sure to stick around to the end of the video too where i'll ask you your favorite content creators their one piece of advice when trying to improve in daisy pvp so let's begin this guide will be split up into five main sections mental fortitude aiming and weaponry situational awareness, inventory management, and lastly, starting out. So mental fortitude. I put this first as this for me was the most important aspect of day Z, aside from obviously, you know, pointing and clicking. The first subsection I want to cover in this topic is confidence. This is a real thing. I've experienced what it is like to not have the confidence at the highest level and also the difference it makes if you do have it now this is something that allows me to be anyone in the game in my head it's the me or him attitude knowing that i'm going to be that guy in front of me if you have doubts in a gunfight chances of you losing that exponentially increase because well it's a worry in the back of your mind so it's important that you keep that confidence going into gunfights to have the maximum opportunity of success this brings us on to the next thing on the list gear fear you probably heard a lot of experienced players talk about this and i'm not here to bullshit you stop i see too many people get so scared about losing their gear that they end up missing out on potentially their best moments in daisy value your character not your gear that way you are way more open to being held up potentially or even being friendly when you shouldn't so don't get attached to your gear this you can apply straight away to your gameplay lastly on this topic we have aggression some people think that daisy is all about patience and to that i say they are half right see Although that is great, if you have control over the situation, that is rarely the case. So finding a right balance between aggression and patience is important. I think it's undervalued. This is a personal lesson I had to teach myself and you guys are going to have to teach yourself. But for me, for example, being aggressive in a situation where you're outnumbered is something that I've built my brand on. Being able to take fights against multiple people, no matter the odds, and being successful it's been something that was difficult to learn but once i knew my ability through trial and error i found a good balance on being aggressive in situations if you guys want to see how i do this live you should check out my twitch i am live wednesday through to sunday 3 p.m uk time this concludes the topic of mental fortitude be sure to take away the key point from this talk, which is having confidence. Don't have gear fear and be more aggressive. We now move on to aiming and weaponry. This is a pretty in-depth section, so let's just jump straight into it. Mouse pad and mouse. Unlike any other Daisy PvP guide out there, neglecting mouse pads is probably one of the most important aspects in your setup and an affordable price at that. With Daisy's limited sensitivity options, it doesn't allow for much adaptation. 
which is why a decent mouse pad can make a difference. I recommend any cloth control pad as the sensitivity in Daisy is already naturally high. I currently use a Japanese mouse pad, the Artisan Shindinkai, which is contradictively a fast pad, but due to my long use on it, it feels best for me. But I personally recommend something a bit better in terms of control. So if you are interested, I would either recommend a Zowie GSR cloth pad or a SteelSeries QCK plus heavy cloth pad. As for mice, I recommend visiting Rocket Jump Ninja's YouTube channel where you can find an in-depth guide on what mouse would be best suited for you. I'll leave the link down below. And if you're curious, I'm currently bouncing between a Razer Viper Ultima and the Final Mouse Ultralight 2 as I am a fingertip grip player. sensitivity. As stated before, Daisy offers very limited range in terms of what you can actually change regarding your sensitivity. The best thing to do is set your mouse DPI to 800 and mess around with the in-game sensitivity scales to match what you like best. Ideally, you want to be able to do 180 degrees turn in-game without feeling out of control. This will allow you to be able to fight in any direction if needed. One last thing I recommend, turn off enhanced pointer precision as this accelerates your aim the faster you turn. If you want consistency and muscle memory, please turn it off. Warming up. This is something that I've done for a long time and it's helped me a lot when I was starting to develop my muscle memory was pivotal in improving my overall aim. I can give you all the tips in the world, but it is important you put in the work into developing the muscle memory for the setup you have now. And there are plenty of ways to do this. I recommend three options into getting your muscle memory set the quickest. First, we have Osu. This is an aim-based game where you have to click circles and timing with the music of the beat map. It is a really fun game and develops your muscle memory without it becoming mundane and boring. Secondly, we have Kovacs. Kovacs has a huge collection of mini aim training maps designed to focus on developing different parts of your aim. This mode I am playing is called One Wall five targets where I have to be as fast as possible whilst maintaining accuracy. And the last recommendation is CSGO Aim Workshop Maps. There are plenty of these out there. You just have to find out what works best for you and get practicing. Now that we have your muscle memory training routines out the way, how do you warm up for Daisy? Well, I still play Osu to warm up the Daisy, as it is relaxing with good music whilst just refreshing your wrists and hands ready for Daisy. However, recently I've been getting into V++ more and more. This is a TDM server, which you can find through the DZHC launcher and offers both vanilla and modded guns in a 23 minute free for all arena. They have a scoreboard, this is great fun, and it's the best way to get used to the Daisy gunplay and ready to wreck people in the actual servers. So, if there is one thing you should be doing, it's warming up. We now move on to crosshair placement. When aiming with ARs at short distances, I recommend positioning your aim around shoulder height. This will allow you to get the first bullet on target, which with the recoil of the gun will naturally rise up towards the enemy's head, giving you a repeatable yet effective way to win close range gunfights. Following the same principle, at medium distances, which is anywhere between 50 and 200 meters, when spraying at your target, aim for the torso region of the player's body. This will give you first shot accuracy whilst having enough time 
to control the recoil of the gun which should stabilize around the shoulder height if you practice controlling your vertical recoil on that gun with sniper rifles it goes without saying we want to aim for the head when dealing with stationary targets but what about enemies who are moving well you want to aim for the thickest part of a player's character which is their upper body region this allows the greatest chance of your shot landing consistently whilst doing the greatest damage leading the shot is all about practice and understanding how different weapons work at what range this is where tdm can be a great help in learning this quickly so i recommend doing that moving on to weapon recall and there's only a couple of things that can be said about this with daisy having a non-linear recall pattern in their guns it means that there is not a set pattern the gun will have a randomized spray pan which does not allow for the greatest opportunity of setting a muscle memory pattern my recommendation is spraying the gun you want to learn and realize how much you have to pull down on your mouse once you learn that because it's almost the same every time vertically it will be about controlling the horizontal pattern as best as possible it's a hard one to learn good luck This concludes the end of aiming and weaponry. The main points to take away from this is setting your muscle memory, warming up, make sure your crosshair placement is correct, the right situation, and finally, learning the vertical spray pan of ARs that Daisy has to offer. The third topic I would like to discuss is situational awareness. This is an important section that requires playtime and experience to really grasp the concept of these so this will be developed the more you play my first subsection is all about audio cues audio cues are vital in getting that split second advantage in a gunfight it is something that i rely on more than my aim when dealing with multiple enemies it can dictate my next move and can give you the best chance of reacting first in that situation so crank that volume up my next tip is all about peripheral vision don't tunnel vision on spots hoping that the enemy will come in that direction keep your wits about you and make sure you look left and right often in an angle you're holding to make sure that the enemy isn't trying to get a cheeky angle on your position plus there's usually more than one player so always look for the second which leads nicely to our next point multiple enemies Dealing with multiple players can be tricky, often daunting. The biggest advice I can give you is to not give them the chance to flank your position, if you can help it, of course. Go on the aggressive and try to take out one or maybe more early on in the gunfight, then reposition. This will start doubts amongst the squad as their numbers are being cut down before they begin the fight. This in turn will stop a flank before it has even begun. When positioning in Daisy, unless you have a particular experience in a given area to know the terrain you're dealing with, try to always see the cover available to you in case a firefight does break out. This will allow you to focus on one less thing and give you more time amongst the gunfight. My last point in this topic I would like to discuss is your teammates. Everyone loves a hero play. But until you have mastered the majority that is to be learned in Daisy, be sure to work with your teammates by communicating clearly, giving each other the right information would be the difference between winning or losing a gunfight. Working together instead of relying on individual brilliance will always have a bigger success rate. So help each other out.
How far out? Side. Two of them, two of them. Uh, coming along creek bed, west side, next to the deer stand, outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in the creek bed, waiting for him. I saw one. Gonna take a shot as soon as I have it. Where is that? One is hit. One's coming close to you, one coming close, pushing. Yeah, falling back. Yeah, with that guy. Minor, I'm behind you. Yeah. Got the far guy. Kill the second guy, kill the second guy. Well done, well done. Falling inside, I'm low. And that ends the situational awareness topic. The main things you should take away from this is to start relying on more audio cues in gunfights. Don't get tunnel visioned on a spot and make sure to keep acknowledging the cover available to you. The penultimate category to discuss is inventory management. This is overlooked by many and this is honestly a shock to me. My first point to bring up is hot bar assignments. This may sound simple, but if you are unsure about what weapon is in which numbered slot, that could be the reason you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. So get used to keeping the same type of items in the same numbered slot and you will memorize it quicker. Next, stop being a loot goblin, overburdening yourself with a ton of guns or items is just not the right play. Unless you're still in looting phase, of course. As soon as you have an opportunity, you should be looking to ditch the unessential items and carrying a maximum of two guns. This will allow you to keep light and increase your stamina for gunfights. When you have got what you want, you want to be thinking about item placement. This is about organizing your inventory in such a way that it is like playing Tetris. But for real, make sure that you have a set location for things that you may need in a hurry. For example, medical supplies in your jacket for quick access. This small tip has saved my life countless times in the past, so I pass this on to you. The final point I want to bring up is food and drink. It may seem really stupid, but I see so many people doing it and it frustrates the life out of me. When you go into a gunfight, you don't know how long that's going to sustain for. So the last thing you need to be worrying about is turning red food and begin to lose health. Just keep topped up on the hunger and hydration levels. It's so simple, yet it goes unchecked. And that concludes my inventory management. If you take these points on board as they are memory based, once you get into that habit, it gives you one less thing to focus on when in PvP. Be sure to try to memorize your hotbar assignments. Don't be a loot goblin. And be sure to store your essential items for quick access. The final topic is starting out. This is catered towards the new players of Daisy who are looking at ways to get started in Daisy. And there are a few points I always get asked. Firstly, Daisy is a marathon, not a sprint. If you want to get good at the game, you're going to have to put the hours in. Additionally, Daisy Adrenaline is a real thing. Adrenaline from Firefights is the best thing in my opinion that no other game offers. So enjoy it. Don't think you need to get rid of it. You will learn to deal with it. Just try to stay calm and composed. Adding on to this, if you want to get to grips with the gunplay first, be sure to try out the TDM server V++ I recommended earlier in the guide. It will help you a lot get familiarized with the weapons in Daisy. And finally, servers. There are so many different types of servers to choose from from vanilla experiences to over modded messes. Just try different ones and see what works best for you and what you like. In my opinion, both vanilla and over modded servers are the easiest in terms of PVP, whilst a server that has a good balance between the two, such as the Kama Crew server, offers the best PVPers in the game. Oh, I just got one tap through. When we're in there? From in there. I shot one.
dead. All four of them. Three of them. Four of them. How many? I don't know. At least three. How did it happen? Now, obviously, there are a few things I left out for good reason. So I'll just tell you guys what I left out and why. If you think of something else, be sure to ask me in the comments or in my live stream. It doesn't matter to me. So when it comes to zeroing, I don't zero when firing the distances. I base it all off judgment. So my advice is to find an in-game rangefinder and work with that item in-game to get better at judging distances. Secondly, how to dodge bullets when being shot at. This is a simple one. Just be unpredictable when strafing. It's simple. Don't just go back and forth. Right? People do it. Don't do it. And lastly, peak battles. With daisy players often varying in ping differences, this becomes so situational. So try your best to improve your reaction speed through the various muscle memory methods I mentioned earlier in the guide. This will also improve your reaction times. And for the final part of this guide, I asked some of your favorite PvP content creators what is their one piece of advice when trying to improve a PvP. These guys all have their YouTubes linked below, so be sure to go check them out. So, let's see what they had to say. We start off with probably the only guy I know that rivals me in Daisy PvP, Toprek. This was his one piece of advice when asked. Don't aim too long. Trust your instincts and reflexes. Shoot and move. Aiming for more than two seconds in a fight versus multiple players will get you killed in Daisy, as there is no quick ways to recover your health like in most battle royales slash arcade shooters. Well guys, great piece of advice. So remember guys, shoot and move. Shoot and move. We now move on to probably the most underrated PvP players that I know currently and someone who deserves far more attention. Erno. Here is what his advice was. Play on lower sensitivity, get comfortable with it, so you'll be consistently better. You cannot be consistently good with high sense. That, and if you really want to get good, then use an aim trainer. Guys, there are plenty of aim trainers out there, some already mentioned in the guide. Great advice, I know. Onto the Daisy Guru himself, a man with a crack at sniper shot, Minder. Here's what he had to say about it. Biggest hurdle to get over is losing your gear. If you're getting to the point where you stop worrying about losing your gear so much and keep your head cool to make the right decisions, you'll be a much better player because of it. Also think about which gun to use based on how much health you have what type of armor, weapon, and health the opponent has, etc. This is another fantastic piece of advice, guys, especially the end. Next, give their one piece of advice, and who excels in close range fights, in my opinion, Project Red Tie. This is what Kyle had to say. I'd say never stop moving when you're in PvP, and don't be scared of losing gear. Most of the time, people die because they camp too long. Great advice, and similar to Tope's answer actually. Camping too long is definitely a bad thing guys, less of it. On to a guy who has been on the grind to produce great content with the PvP skills to do it, JLK. Here's what he had to say. The best advice is to calm and compose yourself as much as possible in every fight, almost to the point where you don't care if you die. That's how you win in my opinion. It's great to see other PvP oriented players are making a mindset in Daisy a priority. Smashing advice, Josh. And last but certainly not least is a guy who has gone way under the radar for PvP, but is great at sniping. So that was sweet. His advice was this. My advice would be to watch videos and try and pick up on people's positioning and movement in fights. Positioning is the main reason you die in fights half the time, so if you can master it, you can get a better chance of fighting back. This is a top notch piece of advice. Watch your favorite PvPers and try to take inspiration is a great way to learn. Nice one, Sour. And that is the end of the PvP guide for Daisy 2020. 
hopefully i covered the majority of things if you did find this helpful be sure to hit that subscribe button like and if you have any questions at all be sure to jump into my twitch channel and ask away see you in game